Welcome. My name is Tom Hanley. I'm an instructor for Juniper Networks Education Services. I'd like to talk to you today about uh, SRX Source NAT. So with SRX Source NAT, the concept here is that we're going to translate a internal a private address right uh, to a, a source address to a, a public source address so that we can communicate with hosts in the internet. Right, there are two, uh, three different ways we can implement source NAT in the SRX, uh, three different types. Uh, interface based source NAT uh, is simply where we're going to uh, translate our source IP address to our outgoing or egress interfaces public address. Uh, and, and port address translation uh, is, is enabled. Right, so with port address translation or PAT, it allows us to scale uh, one public address to multiple internal private addresses. Right. Uh, the third, the second type of uh, source NAT is pool-based source NAT. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a pool, right? And uh, within the pool, we have public addresses in the pool. So we're going to translate our private in, uh, internal address source address to a public address, and we're going to translate it to an address that's in the pool, right? Uh, so you see, PAT it is uh, it, we can do it with or without PAT port address translation. The, the default is that uh, port address translation is enabled. Uh, the last uh, type of source NAT is address shifting. Uh, this is uh, where we create, this is similar to pool based source NAT, uh, right? And so we create a pool, pool of public addresses, and within this pool we define, right, the first uh, a private address called a host address that lines up with the very first public address that's in the pool of addresses. Right, um, so and from there on, we have a direct relationship, right, between the private and public addresses, right, that are in the pool. Right, uh, PAT is always disabled. Port address translation is disabled with address shifting. The way we implement us uh, uh, NAT uh, in the SRX is with the concept of rule sets. Right, uh, so uh, we have rule sets, and within rule sets, we have we could have two uh, type of match conditions. Um, with source net, we do have two. We have uh, a from clause and a to clause, uh, and uh, within these from or to clauses, we could define either a routing instance, a zone, or an interface. Right, and you see that the more specific rule set will overlap. Right, if we have overlapping um, rule sets. So an example of that may be where I have a, a rule set that has from interface, right, and then I have another rule set that says from zone. And let's say I have multiple interfaces in that zone, and the one that actually matches is the one that right, is specific for that interface. So the interface-based rule set would rule over right, um, the, the zone-based pool set because it's more specific. We get. We can also within these rule sets, we'll have rules. Rules uh, are configured in the order in which they are created. Right within the rule sets, we can define uh, match conditions. Match conditions such as uh, source address and destination address, uh, as uh, examples. Uh, and with source net, we can have three different types of actions. Right, the, the action we're going to see is defined in the then part. Right of the uh, rule, so three different types of actions. Off, in other words, don't translate. Pool means means go to the a uh, pool that's been configured and translate to an address in the pool. Right in the third being interface base, which means we're going to translate to the outgoing or the egress interface public address. Right. Um, uh, in our translation process. Uh, and a couple of other uh, statements that, uh, that occur with uh, our implementation on the SRX are static NAT over rules. So if we have static NAT configured, that will overrule any source NAT right, uh, being taking place. Uh, also, when we have any changes to uh, NAT rules or pools, right, uh, they can have uh, an effect about, uh, on uh, existing sessions in terms of tearing them down. So what I like to do now is I like to kind of go through a, uh, some examples of how we would actually go through configuration of these different of a NAT, three different types of NAT. Right. So uh, we're going into configuration. We're, I'm in the configuration on uh, this uh, SRX. So 
I'm going to go into edit security, write uh, net source in this case. Right, and uh, what I'm going to do is show you the configuration of a rule set. So, right, the rule set we're going to say is very basic here, rule set one. Right, and we're going to define the from clause, from interface in this case. And then the to clause, in this case from or to zone. Uh, in, uh, in either one of these clauses, the from or the to clause, again, it could be an interface, uh, a zone, right, uh, or a routing instance, right? So there's, there's a lot of flexibility there. So I've defined that. Now I'm going to define my first rule. Call it rule uh, 1A, and I'm going to match. Source address. So any uh, uh, private address in that source subnet range would be a match in this case. In the action source that interface. All right. So if I display the um, the configured rule. Right, we'll we'll see that uh, in Rule 1A, uh, match source address to source subnet, which is the source uh, private subnet address that we want to translate from. Right, uh, to the uh, uh, to an action being we're going to translate to the egress or the outgoing interfaces uh, public address. Right, so that's a interface-based source net. The, the next thing I want to talk about or get into, right, is pool-based source net. So. This means we have to go to the configuration of a pool. So, so ba basic pool configuration, we'll just call it pool A, and then we'll define our address range, which could be one or multiple addresses in the address range. So let's take a look at what the pool looks like. Back into our rule set. And I'm going to create another rule called rule 1B. So we're going to match that source subnet Right, so when we take a look at what we've what I've actually can created here, we see the the pool at the top, pool A, which contains the public address uh, addresses that we want to translate uh, to our source address to. And then we take a look at rule one uh, B. Right, uh, we're going to match on it our in, our internal uh, source private address subnet. Right, so any um, packet that has uh, that source IP subnet in it would be translated, um, have its source address translated to an address from pool A, right up above. Right, so that's the second type of source NAT. The third type of source NAT is address shifting. Right, uh, so uh, going back to the pool configuration. I'm going to create another pool. In this example, The difference, so you see my pool range that I've created, which is similar to what I did with pool A. Uh, the difference here is that this parameter is going to turn on, enable, right, if you will, uh, address shifting. 
as a function. So with a host based address, I'm defining the first host address in a range of private addresses. Right, so uh, the, what happens here with this configuration is that uh, this host address that I've defined here will line up with the very first public address in pool B, right? Um, and uh, the next sequential private address, which would be 10.1.12.2, would line up with this next uh, public address in the pool. So we have a one to one direct relationship that's established after this configuration. Uh, with uh, address shifting, PAT is disabled, so there's no uh, port address translation. So let's see the rule that actually supports this. We're going to see a real similarity to the, uh, between this and regular pool-based source that. I'm going to kind of uh, cover another uh, rule set configuration. Finding the from and to clauses here as well. And the, the rule that will support this net functionality. We'll call it rule 2A. So if you see what I've actually configured here, um, it's really uh, almost identical that to that of the pool-based source stat that we did in the previous uh, configuration example. The only difference here is that within the pool, I define the source, uh, the host uh, address base, which defines the first uh, private address in the range of private addresses. So and starts the direct relationship between the private and the public addresses in the pool. Uh, but if we take a look at the rule uh, that I've actually created, the rule is very similar, right, um, to um, the configuration, right, example that we saw uh, for the pool-based rule right previously. So that concludes my discussion of uh, source-based NAT as it applies to the SRX product line. Right, uh, there is there are a lot of uh, uh, additional information that you can get uh, about right security and um, SRX uh, uh, net network address translation as well. We have a number of courses that are available. Right, you can see um, the courses that are listed there on our public website at Juniper Networks. Right, we also have a lot of security is uh, available as well. Thanks again for attending attending the class. Right, and have a great day. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.